Okay, can I start? Okay, good morning. Okay, and uh, just me. Let me recap uh, the re recapitulate the the some topics of the last uh, lectures. The lecture. Um, okay. Uh, yesterday we finished to define uh, the abstract notion of dynamical systems. Okay, the abstract notion of dynamical systems, the last part was the invariant measure, and we discussed the importance of, of uh, invariant measure in dynamical systems. And I give you also some uh, information about the definition, the theoretical definition of uh, the bag measure, that is a generalization of uh, the piano Jordan uh, integration theory, okay? This, the Lebesgue measure has the advantage that lots of uh, sets can be measurable with respect to this definition, this notion. Okay. Then we introduce the Poincaré section and the stroboscopic view as uh, one possibility to, to see, to visualize uh, possible strange behaviors of the dynamics. In, uh, of course, in higher dimension, you have to, of course, project, but this projection could be, is not, uh, is, couldn't be arbitrary. It is better to use these two uh, tools, uh, stroboscopic view and section, just to don't have uh, a spurious effect in your representation. Okay. Basically, if you make a very naive uh, uh, um, projection, you can have some uh, uh, bad ideas or wrong ideas on the motion. Okay. Finally, we define Hamiltonian dynamics. Uh, and uh, we introduce the symplectic formulation of uh, the Hamiltonian dynamics, which is most symmetric uh, with respect to P, the momentum, and the uh, um, coordinates. And uh, this is, done written, is written in this way, where this is the uh, gradient of the Hamiltonian with respect to the coordinate with X, uh, X is general coordinate, including in, uh, momentum and uh, coordinates. This matrix is called the symplectic uh, uh, fundamental matrix. This is the uh, um, null matrix, the null matrix of order n, and this is the identity matrix of order n, okay? Finally, we started to uh, discuss the problem of changing coordinates. Hmm? Because uh, we discovered that, uh, or we ask basically that if you have an Hamiltonian system, you want that your, change, your coordinate change must preserve the Hamiltonian structure. And this, this implies a constraint on the, uh, uh, on the transformation. And the constraint is written in this, uh, in this formula. So this is the Jacobian of the transformation, of the canonical transformation, symplectic or canonical transformation. The definition, symplectic transformation or canonical transformation preserve the Hamiltonian structure of the equation of motion. Okay? Definition. Then we discover that the Jacobian of the transformation must satisfy this strange equation that is called uh, uh, symplectic uh, uh, definition of a matrix. So you say that the, the, if, a canonical if you have a canonical transformation, no canonical transformation, the Jacobian of the, 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 the canonical, trans the, the Jacobian M of this canonical transformation must satisfy this identity. I just, to give you some uh, possibility to recall, you see the analogy, the analogy with the orthogonal matrices. Hmm? Remember that, if you remember, the, that somehow symplectic transformation are something like, like uh, uh, um, orthogonal matrices, orthogonal transformation in, uh, in the real space, okay? In the, in, so, okay. And this is the, <coughs> the last part. Can I erase the blackboard? Everything? Question, comments on, on this concept? No. Okay. Let me erase. <coughs> oh. 
Okay. And now we start with an example, simple example. I try to do is hit the, at the, the blackboard without doing uh, mistakes, I hope. So, and uh, consider, for example, a very simple Hamiltonian, the oscillator, the harmonic oscillator. H is p squared divided by 2 plus q squared divided by 2. OK? And then I make a transformation of coordinates just to simplify the notation. The Sorry, P. Capital P. This is capital P, eh? OK. It looks like a uh, polar coordinate transformation. I substitute, and my Hamiltonian, if I do not mistakes, is simply uh, P squared over 2, OK? Then I write my equation of motion in, due in this new set of coordinates, Hamiltonian equation of motion. So you have p dot is equal to minus the derivative of q of k, and q dot is the derivative of k with respect to capital P. OK? Matteo, correct me if uh, I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. OK, so the equation of motion is very simple in this case. In fact, you, have, uh, you, you are supposed to have chosen a good transformation. In fact, in this case, uh, you have uh, that your equation of motion is uh, p and 0. Uh, sorry, the other one. 0, sorry. And this is p. OK? So p <coughs> is a constant and given from by the initial conditions. And q, since p is constant, is nothing but that translation, OK? q0 plus p0 t. Very simple. OK? We are happy. We are solved. Now we have to invert. Coming back to the original, to the original problem. If you do so, for example, and uh, you can see this uh, in uh, your in the slide, uh, if you try to invert, you obtain this kind of solution, for example, because you use this, uh, you use this transformation, you come back. P of t is equal to P0, capital P0, that is constant, cosine of q, but q is q of 0 plus p0t, and q of t is equal to, of course, p0 sine q0 plus p0 time. OK. Apparently, we solved the problem. Hmm? We use a canonical transform. We use a transformation, a transformation, and we solve the problem. What's the? But there is a problem now. In fact, if you try to solve the original problem, and it's very easy to solve the original problem since it's a, an harmonic oscillator, you find a different solution. In fact, just I give you, I let you this uh, an exercise. You can see that the solution is this. It is incompatible with that one. OK? Are you convinced of that? The problem, where is the problem now? Maybe I did a mistake in the computation, but Batteo, correct me. Hmm? What's the problem? Any guess? An intuition? It's not a canonical transformation. Exactly. Exactly. This one is not a canonical transformation. 
and then I run in trouble. Okay. In fact, if you consider here, exactly, this is not a canonical transformation. For example, you can see if you make the the if you take the Jacobian of the transformation, no, and you take the determinant, you see the determinant is not one, but it's minus p. Hmm? If this would be a canonical transformation, the determinant of the Jacobian would be one. Instead, in this case, it's p. Okay, and this is why you run often in troubles when you are when you are considering. Uh, uh, Hamiltonian systems. You need to use canonical transformations. Otherwise, your solutions or your simplification of the model, because you, you, generally you, you make a change of coordinate to simplify the model, is not correct. Okay? Okay. Sorry. Okay, and so there is a technique to avoid this, this, uh, wrong, uh, this wrong mistake, these mistakes, okay? And the technique is using a generating function when you are dealing with uh, Hamiltonian systems. So canonical transformation are, I repeat, uh, canonical transformation are the only admitted change of variable in Hamiltonian systems. Canonical transformation has, are hard to be found no, because in this case, you see that uh, I did a mistake. Uh, eh? Soon, I soon I did a mistake. And so we find more solution than the correct one. No, we find the wrong solution, I, I would say. Something that is not, is unphysical, basically. Do I reply? Matteo? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, OK. Something that's unphysical. If I, don't use, uh, if I don't use canonical transformation, I could have unphysical solutions, OK? And now I would explain. So generating function method is a, a method to avoid symplectic violations, OK? Example, suppose you have, you don't, you, you want to change uh, only the positions, for example. You decided for symmetry. You know that uh, the, your system has uh, some symmetry. And you want to make uh, the transformation from Q to Q in order to exploit uh, the symmetry of your system, simplify the, 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 uh, the formulation. No? So once you have, once you ask, uh, this, uh, once you, you define this, uh, this uh, um, transformation, for example, Q, the question is, how do I transform the momentum? Hmm? It's a preserving the canonical condition. No? This, is, this is defined by your, the symmetry of your system. But what about momentum? OK? And the answer is given by the, the uh, generating function. OK? Generating function, so consider this a, a, a systematic technique to obtain canonical transformation. And uh, I'll give you just a, a simple demonstration of uh, why I can, uh, how one can rec recover the uh, generating function. Suppose you have, no, suppose. This is the basic uh, notion of uh, preserving uh, the volume of, uh, of uh, Hamiltonian systems. Hamiltonian systems generally preserve these quantities. 
we work in two dimensions, but can be generalized. Okay, this identity is true hmm? because we saw that the, the, the divergence of Hamiltonian flow is zero. So there is a, a, a conservation of uh, volumes, but even, tra even canonical transformation should preserve volumes. Otherwise, it's not a canonical transformation. The determinant should be one, okay? Now, let me apply, uh, this, is, this is, can be done for a domain D, D, a domain D on the phase space, D. Okay. Are you familiar with the Stokes theorem or Green theorem? Hmm? Ah, okay, so. <coughs> I will repeat if you want. Stokes theorem says that if you have a vector V and you have a curve C, the circulation, the line integral of V is equal to the flux of the curl of V over any surface insisting, so with the border of C. Okay. And now apply here the Stokes theorem in two dimensions that is called Green theorem, actually. And uh, okay. So I can't I, I won't I would like to transform this so due to the in a line integral dp up plus dq uq. So this is the vector, no? my vector u with component u, p, and uq. But here, but this is a flux. And this is a flux of the curl. The curl in two dimension is something like this dq, uh, dp, dq, up, and uq. Okay, this means that duq with p and minus duP der derive with respect to, uh, to uh, q. Matteo? Yeah. Okay, thank you. But this should be one. So one possibility to transform this in this is to consider that up, the vector u, is equal to q uh, zero. Uh, sorry, p. No, it's uh, p zero. And you can write uh, this way, this object into the integral of a line of the border. It's like P dQ. Okay, you can do, you, you redo, I don't know if uh, maybe, okay. The idea is, simp is this, no? P, uh, no, see, yes, Q. You want to, so this is, should be, this is zero, and this is Q, and this is uh, uh, P, okay? In fact, uh, the, gra the, the, the curl is uh, one, okay? Any mistake? I recap. I use the Stokes, the green, the green, uh, the green, uh, the green uh, theorem to transform this integral on the surface into a line integral. And the line integral, I would like to have this form. So my vector is this one, and its uh, 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 curl is this one. Maybe uh, the vector mu should be q0. 
So the first component is mu p, right? Oh, no, sorry. Uh, because you want the d mu q. I would like, I, would, I want this one. I would like this to remain with this one. So uq should be p. I think it's OK. I leave you j this just an exercise, OK? Professor, only a question. We, we impose that it must be 1, or it is a consequence because we impose that it must be equal to the line integral? No, no, we impose because it's 1, because here you have the flux of the curve, okay. but the flux of the curve okay. is 1 here. OK, okay. okay. Thank you. OK. So modulus errors, but you can repeat your, your definition. No? You use the Stokes or Green theorem. You arrive at this kind of identity P dQ plus. Also, in this part, I can do this. And so I have P dQ. OK? It's, and this should be equal to 0 if I put this on this side of the equation. OK? With a minus sign? There is a minus sign, yes, of course. Thank you. Yes. I'm a bit lost at why uh, we uh, require that the integral over d of dq dp must be equal to the integral over d of uh, dq uppercase dp uppercase. Because you want that your canonical transformation satisfy this condition, but this condition means that the determinant of your transformation is 1. All right. So it means that uh, if you change variables from q dp, you have, of course, dq dp multiplied by the determinant of the Jacobian, but this Jacobian is 1 because the definition of symplectic So this is exactly saying that the symplectic form uh, stays uh, the same over the transformation? Repeat it. This is as saying as the symplectic form stays the same over the, over the transformation? It says that you don't make transformation, canonical transformation if you don't preserve the areas. Okay. Because Hamiltonian systems preserve areas. So canonical is a consequence of the fact that you are dealing with canonical systems, okay? Canon um, Hamiltonian systems, okay? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now you arrive this, at this point. Can can someone tell me the meaning of this identity of this equation? And this is valid for every for every curve for every curve which bounds uh, the domain D. The domain D is arbitrary. Can you say something about this? What's the, what's the definition of that? This defines something. An exact differential. Perfect. Thank you. This is an exact differential. P dq minus p dq. So it means that f, this function, is a function of q, is a function of capital Q. And I have more, of course, because p is nothing but the derivative of f1 with respect to q and capital P is nothing but the derivative of f1 with respect to capital Q. And now I arrived at the canonical transformation. Okay. I can invert this and I can, oh, yes. 
minus yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Thank you. And this is your canonical transformation because you have p as a function of q and q, p as a function of q and capital Q. You invert, of course, and you have. Yes, please. Yes, 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 exactly. In fact, in fact, no, he says, he says, it's possible to exchange, for example, the coordinate. I, I would like to have not, for example, capital Q, Q and capital Q, but he asked, I, I, I think, capital P and capital P, for example, and a small p, for example, no? Is that the question? No, ah, sorry, I, I mean. It was kind of this question. My question was, uh, do we need to define a second function to, do we need to define a second function to obtain P and, and big P? Or can we do, or can we obtain a, a relation from our F1 to obtain the transformation on P2, P as well? So you need another, another, another function you need, you, you no, mean? No, I mean, we obtain a canonical tr transformation from Q, from small Q to big Q. Mm -hmm. Do we need a second function to obtain a transformation from P to PB? No, or, yeah, no, you have or, here, um, this, this, I hear, it's written here because P is a function of uh, Q of P and Q of Q. And here is P Q and Q, capital Q. So. But maybe you have, for example, you have at the, at, the, at the beginning, you have, for example, a transformation Q of Q. So you want to construct this, but if you want to also that your transformation is preserved, so preserve the, the canonical, the canonical. Okay. okay? Okay, thank you. Oh, this is, this is the first part of the story. There are four kinds of uh, generating function. And uh, this generating function can be obtained by the original, by the original, ah, for example, consider this. Hmm? This one, if, if you, you, you want to do an example, you can use uh, this as a canonical transformation, and you see what kind of transformation it is, is in terms of uh, P, Q, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, capital Q, and uh, uh, capital P, and uh, small p, and small q. Okay, try an exercise for, for this one, for example. But if I start from the definition of F1, I can also generate other canonical transformation. And the, the way is very simple because uh, I have only to play with the differentials. In some sense, is F1 is equal to, uh, remember, P d, d, dF. 1 is P dQ minus P, uh, sorry, PQ, P dQ. But if I write, for example, this in this way, d pq minus d minus q dp, for example, and this is again uh, uh, differ uh, a differential, so an exact differential, I put this with this. And I get P TQ minus Q uh, minus uh, probably this is minus and this is P, correct? Okay, and this is minus P DQ. Uh, I think it should be plus. 
should be plus. Yes, should be plus. In fact, this is plus. OK. And now, this function 2 that we call f2 is exact, an exact differential, which depends on, depends on smaller p and smaller q, sorry, smaller q and capital P, OK? And again, the transformation can be given by P is nothing but the derivative of F2 with respect to Q. And Q is nothing but the derivative of F2 with respect to capital P, OK? And so on. Maybe can I make a question? So does this remind you of anything? Huh? Allergen transform? Yeah, it's very similar, no? Uh, yes, in principle, yes. 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 The structure is a Legend transform. Basically, you pass from one, maybe, yeah, you're right. You can pass from one generating function to the other using Legend transform, of course. Correct. I would say correct. And, uh, OK, you have, of course, here the scheme through which you can mix all these quantities. Uh, no? And you have five, five kind of, sorry, four kind of generating transformation. And I leave you an exercise. Suppose that, suppose that you have this transformation. Q is equal to some j, a j, the matrix a j, q j, where a, a transpose is 1, so it's an orthogonal, an orthogonal transformation, basic a rotation, for example, in higher space uh, is a rotation. The question is, how can construct P, how, how P transform? OK, the question is, this is the starting point. For, for this exercise, I would like that you understand how which is the transformation on P, on the, on the momentum, hmm? the capital momentum, OK? Using generating functions. OK. Oh, <coughs> the generating function is a very powerful tool because, of course, there is the master of all generating function. That is the best one, the optimal one. And the optimal one is the one that allows you to solve the problem. Hmm? For example, suppose you are you are you have this Hamiltonian at the beginning. You want me to make to pass on another Hamiltonian whose equation of motion are very simple. Just like in the example that I showed you, the wrong example. OK, if you want to, if you are able to, to make this transformation where p dot is 0, and of course, q dot now evolves according to the constant, hmm? this constant. And uh, this constant, are, of course, uh, depending on, uh, on, on, on k, hmm? on new k, then it is possible to solve the motion, OK? Because the motion, in this case, is nothing but the translation of the torus. In fact, uh, if you remember the example that I, I, I showed you uh, the, the last lecture, I told you something that it was, at the moment, was very confusing. I told that the transformation of the torus actually are related to the 
integrable systems. In fact, you say that a system, uh, an integ a system is integrable if your dynamics sooner or later can be considered a uh, com um, composition of uh, transformation on translation on the torus. Okay, and this is the way you solve a typical um, Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian uh, um, system. If you are able to find a transformation of the Hamiltonian giving this kind of equation, very simple, your problem is solved. Okay? There is a theorem, in fact, it's called uh, Liouville Arnold theorem, but not Liouville theorem about the phase space. I don't. Com don't um, uh, confuse this, but this is Liouville Arnold theorem on integrability, which says that a, a necessary and sufficient condition for integrability of n degree, a system of n degree of freedom, is that your Hamiltonian, uh, for uh, n degrees of freedom Hamiltonian system, is the existence of n independent integral of motions. Hmm? It means that you have n functions preserved by the, by the dynamics, okay? This, this object. And generally, F1 is the Hamiltonian, if the Hamiltonian is independent, of, independent on time, okay? In other words, it means that, uh, more precisely, the system is integrable if it has an integral of motion in, in involution. What means in involution? They are Poisson commuting each other in pairs, okay? So this is the Poisson uh, um, parenthesis. Have you ever seen Poisson parenthesis? Okay, okay, but here there's the, the definition of the Poisson parenthesis, and this is the definition in a symplectic formulation of, para, of uh, a Poisson parenthesis, okay? So, if this happens, it exists a canonical transformation such that your Hamiltonian depends only of this constant of motions, okay, and the Q coordinates evolves linearly in time, okay? Linearly in time means they are Q, Q0 plus omega i, Q0i, why the momentum are constant. Okay, and this is an integrable system. And yes, I don't know in the previous slide. In the previous slide. Oh, in the previous slide. Yes. In the, in the previous slide, you used the concept of best canonical transform. I don't know yes. what, what does it mean, best mean? Why you best means one? that the, the, the canonical transformation allows you to solve the problem. So you, to arrive at this kind of Hamiltonian equation that are, are solvable. These are solvable. In fact, this is constant, and this is a, 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 a shift in time of the uh, coordinate, no? This is, you solved. The solution of this, uh, this, uh, of this problem is that, very simple. But you have to come back, of course, to the original transformation. The difficulty is there. That means if you succeed to have like a linear trans, like linear in time, that means the canonical transform is the best one? Linear because it is because very it's simple. Linear. It's very the, the, the simplest uh, the simplest uh, curve that you can have, for example. Okay. No, yeah. the, the, the the straight line is the simple uh, okay. in this way. So it's very it's very easy to solve. The, so the difficulty is in coming back, coming back to the original to the original to the original coordinate. Okay. Uh, Another question? Yes. Yeah? About coming back to the original uh, coordinates, 
uh, are there cases in which I can't, I mean, in which uh, uh, there, there is no, no general, unfortunately, there is no general method. And uh, of course, this is, uh, I'm not working in Hamiltonian system, but I think that it's, uh, it's a big problem for, for people working. Uh, so this is only half a solution of your model. The coming back is the, the most difficult one, of course. I mean, but there are also some... But if, if, eh? There are also some uh, symplectic transformations that are not be, be active. Yes, so, you have to invert okay. the symplectic transformation, of course. No? Yeah, but I mean, there are also transformations which are not invertible that are still solutions. So I can't come mm, back. Generally, generally you're, you try to don't use a not invertible transformation. So they're not because when generally you, you try to so con making a, a take a canonical transformation is very it's a hard work eh? so because it's uh, the way you solve any any Hamiltonian problem in principle no there are problems that can be solved other that cannot be solved hmm? like in uh, in quantum mechanics no there are problems that can be solved other not so but. Uh does the fact uh, that you preserve volume implies that it must be bijective? Uh, maybe, yes, maybe you are right, probably. So even though, yes, probably the fact that the, the determinant is one helps a lot, a lot to find the, so don't you have singular, singular transformation? So maybe you are right, yes, good. Okay. Can I go, go on? Yes. OK. And uh, let me go. Sorry. I have to shift. Okay. Uh, the fact that you are able to find the solutions in that form is called action variable, action angle transformation. In, your, in the books, generally, you find that if a system is integ integrable, hmm, you can find a transformation that is for, I think, historical reasons, action angle or angle action. Angle. Action. Transformation. OK. In this case, uh, in this case, uh, the momentum are called I, the action, and the coordinates are considered angles. Hmm? Because, of course, uh, the solution are periodic, no? Because you can consider your solution on a torus. Hmm? Okay, and so this is, and this is for, for basic historical reason, action angle variables. Okay, and I, I think I skipped some. Okay, yes. Consider, for example, this very simple Hamiltonian, H of Q. This is a simple one dimensional, one, uh, one degrees of freedom of systems. This system can be, this system can be easily integrated, no? Because of course, according to Liouville theorem, you have one integral of motion and one degrees of freedom. So according to Liouville, this can be integrated, and the integration is very simple because you write your Hamilton equations. Hmm? Your Hamilton equation, that is. P dot minus uh, 
u q and q dot is equal to p, OK? But you have also the constraint of the energy conservation, p and q. Your Q. Then you can extract, for example, P, P from this equation that is 2m e minus u of Q, right? Huh? And then you substitute this one. Sorry. Can you read? I have to, to write larger. Can you read? OK. And um, people, hmm? so people are sorry. Yes, you are right. So I use this one, and I substitute. And you have q dot is equal to square root plus minus 2m e minus u of q, right? And this is the typical, you can integrate like this, the q divided by, I, for the moment, leave the double, the double sign, the ambiguity of the double sign. Hmm? Dt. The double sign, the ambiguity of the double sign can be uh, removed by this, the choosing of the initial condition. In fact, in this case, suppose you have this potential. <coughs> you have this potential, and this is your energy level, which select your orbits. No? And this for example, and your orbit is in the phase space should be, let me try this one. This way. OK. And this is the plus solution, and this is the minus solution. So it's no problem. The sign is not a problem. Hmm? Can be removed. Deciding the decided this this integration can be done using the, on the circle this one and this one. Okay. But there is another method to solving this. This is called action angle. And uh, I can stop here. Shall I stop? Yes? Pose? OK. Relax. OK. Thank you. OK, we take five minutes break. Hey guys, uh, we are uh, resuming uh, the lecture. Thanks. OK. Can you hear me? OK. And uh, yes, okay. <coughs> this is the uh, this is the so-called quadrature integration methods for a one-dimensional system. That is very simple, very usual, no? And uh, but there is another method to solve this problem using exactly the action angle variables. In this case, you define uh, the uh, action the action i in this way. And that's remind you something. So that's remind you something like this, you see, no? And um, OK, you integrate over on, on the cycles, on the cycles. And you see why now the, your variable is considered an angle, because it's going on a, on a circle or something that is topological similar to a circle. 
And uh, then you arrive a very simple Hamiltonian, and you can use the trick. So the, the, you define this canonical transformation from i and, and the angle and the angle phi, and so you have the uh, the solution of the model in an, in an alternative way. You can use directly uh, the quadrature approach, but even if you try to make it the exercise, you can use also angle variable uh, action angle variables. Okay. And just few uh, pictures about what was going on when you use uh, action variable angle, uh, angle action variables. You have this is the solution, and your solution lives on the, for example, two-dimensional torus or d-dimensional torus, of course. In two n, in, uh, in this, if you have two n uh, dimensional phase space, you have n-dimensional torus. And uh, you see if uh, omega, this quantity omega that comes from your, your uh, integration is a rational, they are in rational, uh, rational ratio, you have a periodic solution on the torus. While if, uh, for example, you have imagine that you have two, two angle variables, for example, theta 1 is theta 1, 0. If you have theta 1 of t is equal to theta 1, 0 plus omega 1, t, and you have the second angle, t, t10 plus omega 2 t. If you look at this number, if this number are in this in this ratio, so these are these are uh, natural numbers, so they are rational, you have a periodic solution on the torus and this one. If this object is different from that, so it's not rational, it's irrational. You can have that your solution is dense or covers densely the torus. Hmm? Okay. And here, I don't know, but here you should see some, uh, oh, the square that is covered is completely shaded by, by your solution. No? Okay. In some sense, you see something that if this is a, a, an irrational case, your torus is completely filled densely by your solution. Okay, you see a spot, a dark spot on your on your square. Okay. <coughs> Now, the other example that we can make is uh, the uh, discrete dynamical systems. No? For example, apart from Poincaré map and uh, the flow map, which are discretization of uh, your dynamics, uh, there are situations in which uh, evolution law are intrinsically discrete. No? In this case, in, and I have already uh, discussed this problem, no? in this case you have uh, a map in the dimensional space, for example, and uh, typically systems, uh, real systems can, that can be described by these, uh, uh, these maps, for example, is uh, the generation of biological species, no? one generation, next generation, third generation, and so on. And, uh, for example, uh, even the algorithm on, computer, on computers are generally discrete. No? If you want to integrate, for example, a differential equation, you end up to a map. No? You end up with a map hmm? on the computer. 
iteration procedure of uh, uh, computer science, for example, our discrete map, hmm? and also seasonal phenomena that repeats, for example, every that repeats, they are uh, uh, distributed over, for example, days. No? You can decide that the the, you can decide that the day is your measure of, uh, of uh, uh, time step. Okay. Then n is a, an integer eh, denoting the iteration, the generation, or the discrete time in general. Okay. Nothing difficult. Okay. As I told you, there are two possibilities. It's a recap, basically. No? There are area preserving and area contracting uh, uh, maps. And it depends, of course, on the Jacobian, on the transformation. Because the map is nothing but a transformation in the, in the uh, phase space, configurational space. So it's a transformation here. And you want to know how an infinitesimal set of your phase space omega change due to the fact that it's transformed. Hmm? OK. And since uh, the transformation is a map, you can have that the Volume transformation is, is uh, the volume transformation is defined by the determinant of the Jacobian of the map. Hmm? The Jacobian of the map, I remember, I recall you, is nothing but if this is the map, the Jacobian, of course, is if this is the map, okay, in n dimension. The Jacobian is the matrix L, that is the Fi, with respect to xj, OK? Or if you consider the map as n plus 1, for example, this is nothing but the xi at time n plus 1 divided x j at time n. And this is the Jacobian, OK? And it tells you how volumes preserve or change in time. Equal 1 is conserved, the map is conservative. Minus 1, the map is dissipative. OK. Very simple. <coughs> OK, now. Some, let me discuss some example of maps uh, in general in two dimension, for example, and uh, in two dimension. Okay. A typical map, for example, is the geometrical transformation. No, it's uh, translation, rotation, dilatation, or combination of them, for example. And this is the first example that you can uh, imagine. No. But there are more general transformations in chaotic, in, in dynamical system, especially in chaotic system. And one of the very well known or best known transformation is the Henon map. Mm. Of, in, it was uh, introduced in the 76 by Henon. And uh, inspired, the, basically, he, he took inspiration from a Poincare section of uh, some Hamiltonian systems uh, of the Lorentz, sorry, of the Lorentz maps. And so he proposed a mapping on the plane composed, which is a composition of three different uh, transformations. You are composing, and you see what happens at the end. And the, uh, the transformation, the, the, the composition is that. First, uh, this is a nonlinear folding uh, in the x direction. This is, the, for example, consider this is the starting set. I take an ellipsis. No? My starting set is uh, the set of points contained in the ellipsis. OK? My starting point is this, the ellipsis. All the points inside this object. Then apply 
this transformation and the transformation transform these ellipse, ellipses into something that is, is like this. Okay, the first T1. The, the equation of T1 is given in these in this, uh, this formulas. Okay? Then we apply, we apply this folding. You see this folding because uh, I make an horseshoe, no? This is an horseshoe. Okay. Horseshoe is another uh, word that is in dynamical systems, as chaotic systems is uh, is important, is recurrent. And I would like you to remember horse. Or show. Hmm. And okay. And then we make this uh, linear contraction of this, uh, this uh, object. So it's only, basically, you are only contract. You reduce the dimension, the, the, the dimension of that. You are shrinking, no? This is L, and this is L prime that is less than L, OK? And finally, a rotation of 2 pi. Take this and put in this, in this orientation, OK? Very simple. If you combine them all together and you start to iterate this transformation, OK? If, if you combine them together, you think the well-known Henon map, this one, is, this is the formula. OK, you have the square of the, the point uh, at, time, at time n plus xn plus 1. So this is a, basically a, parab uh, so a, a, a quadratic transformation. And this is instead, the, the second one is basically a linear transformation. Is, uh, so if you, if you compose those transformations, you arrive at the, final, at the final formula that is this one. I think that the battery is going down. Matteo, the battery is, is going down. Can you? Do you have any? Ah, maybe I have, I have, my, I have myself uh, my own. I have my own. Okay, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, the map, of course, is dissipative. How do we know that this is dissipative? Hmm? How do we know that the map is dissipative? What operation I have to do? This map is dissipative or conservative, for example? What shall I do? Recording. Exactly, the Jacobian. I have to compute the Jacobian. And if you, make the, if you compute the Jacobian by exercise, of course, you observe that the Jacobian is the determinant of the Jacobian is L. Is B, sorry, B, this parameter here. Is B generally is positive. 
but uh, is uh, considered is uh, considered is taken less than one. So the map is dissipative. But the map is invertible. Yes, of course. In fact, it's very simple to make an inversion of this uh, of this uh, this map. Mm? And I, I leave you this exercise also. Mm? Anyway, you start with the inversion of this, uh, and then you, okay, you try. This is very simple, and you can invert uh, the other one. You give the transformation. Hmm? Inversion means that you have to write x n in function as a function of n n minus s plus one, and of course, uh, uh, x one is function. Uh, okay. This, these two quantities in function of these two quantities, you have inversion. This map is invertible. In fact, uh, the, the, ni the nice thing is that it was the, one of the uh, few quadratic maps that can be invertible. And uh, so it's a one-to-one -one mapping of the plane onto itself. And uh, generally, Hannon studied the iteration for several range of parameters and finding uh, lots of behaviors. But what he found very interesting was a chaotic motion on a strange attractor. And if you have want an idea what, strange or th what the strange attractor is, and is this one. Hmm? You see? You see that there is a, a folding of uh, of the points, uh, no, but also the stretching. And so this is the typical, the typical effect of chaos. I repeat, the stretching and folding is a typical mechanism through which chaos develops. Hmm? Okay. Lodzi, another another mathematician, introduced in the '78 uh, another map that is uh, somehow a, a simplification of uh, of uh, a known map. He placed instead of the square here, he put the modulus. But basically, again, the, the map is contracting too. If that is the if beta is uh, is uh, sorry is b is uh, less than one, the map is again invertible. Okay, and uh, and the attractors there is some similar to the Hennon attractor with the fact that you have some kind of cusps here. And probably the cusps is due to the fact that you are, con you are considering the modulus. Not probably the fact that you, have, you are considering the modulus here. This is another famous. And this is the, how, the example of a strange attractor. In the lecture of Angelo Vulpiani, you will see how to characterize strange attractors, what strange attractors are, and the way to characterize them in terms of fractal geometry instabilities, because uh, here there are lots of instabilities in the motion, no? uh, due to the fact that the system stretch and falls continuously your, 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 uh, your points. Okay? Angelo Vulpiani tells you something about that, how to characterize, to study this kind of object. Okay. Just for completeness, uh, I would say that uh, there are maps, uh, two-dimensional maps, for example, that are symplectic uh, too. No? Basically, they are the discrete version of the Hamiltonian systems. Consider a symplectic map uh, nothing, is nothing but the version, the discrete version of Hamiltonian systems. So the properties of Hamiltonian systems can be translated into the uh, properties of the maps. Okay, again, this is the map. The map has a Jacobian, so the Jacobian is the, the important uh, object of the maps because it, it defines how uh, volumes uh, deform in the phase space, uh, change in the phase space, and if the map is symplectic, of course, it's Jacobian should be symplectic, should satisfy the rule that I already showed you for Hamiltonian uh, canonical transformations. Hmm? And this is M if uh, L, I use L. If L is the Jacobian, I expect if the map is 
uh, is uh, uh, um, symplectic that it satisfies this equation again. I'm so boring, but I have to repeat this one because, okay? Mnemonically, you, re you remember that this is the same like if you want to, if you want a mnemonical rule to understand, to recall, to recall, to remind the the symplectic, uh, the symplectic maps. Of course, uh, simple version of the symplectic map is this one. Hmm? It's a linear map, you see. But linear, not, not so linear, because at some point you take the modulus. The modulus is a nonlinear operation. So the structure is linear, but as soon as you take the modulus, is, uh, the, the, the transformation becomes nonlinear. Otherwise, it would be uh, very trivial, of course. Hmm? OK, these maps act on the torus, 0, 0. Yes? I don't know the modulus transformation. What is it about? Could you repeat, sorry? The modulus. I don't know that. Ah, what's the modulus? Yes. Ah, OK. The modulus is some function that say, <coughs> is that if you have a number x that is in 0, 1, it remains x. Otherwise, is outside, you have to make this operation. If x does not belong to 0, 1, you have to make this transformation. x is x minus integer of x. And this is OK. Hmm? K integer, for example, you need for. So you are folding. So you're, if you have, uh, this is 0, 1. If uh, the point is here, you remain here. If the point is here, you have to compute how many intervals are distance from, uh, from this. And you take this point uh, and you fold in this point, OK? It's a folding, basically. You report, uh, you, 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 you take your, your, your point, uh, let's say A, here. Of course, even in negative, uh, hmm? This is not correct. OK, and geometrically, geometrically is this, OK? Mm. You refold. You try to refold all your, your um, real axis onto, onto 0, 1. This is the modulus, OK? For negative number, is it the same? Yes, exactly. On the other side, you have, you'd make the same. OK, you sum instead of in the other side, you sum instead of uh, subtracting, OK? <coughs> if you want to know this, the action of the map, uh, you, you do the same. You take uh, uh, I know, I know, uh, um, an ellipsis of point, and you see that the, the first iteration this ellipsis is transformed, is stretched, no? But the modulus operation takes the part of the ellipsis into the, into the, the no? Because transformation is a, you make this, for example. You have the ellipsis. You take the ellipses. The ellipses is transformed, no? This is zero, no, uh, the ellipse is, oh, no, okay. sorry, the, the, the plot is this. 
you have this is the ellipsis and this is the torus one zero one okay you apply the transformation the ellipsis is deformed okay and you take the part of the ellipsis you can back you take this part and you put here for example you take here and you have uh, here this one is so you you fold basically you have to fold uh, your ellipses into the into the square okay and uh, the branch correspond to this branch another branch correspond to the branch also all into the into the same the same the same uh, the same square okay if you make another iteration you see that another iteration you see nothing because uh, of the, <laughs> sorry for because of the uh, of the reproduction of the of the graphics <laughs> sorry okay but more and uh, if you take it at, at least uh, for example 10 iteration just you see that uh, the this uh, ellipsis is scrambled over the, the, the square hmm? and you can you're not able to recognize the form if I I give you the last picture you don't know which uh, which is the source of the of the at uh, the beginning was this this was okay you don't know you are not able to recognize because of the fact that the chaos acts in this way hmm? okay the stretching is you it is due to the fact that the ellipse is structured, is rotated and structured, but the folding, the modulus is the folding operation. No? The folding makes this uh, uh, the behavior very, very, very difficult to be understood. Okay? And this is called the cat map, and uh, I'm sorry for the uh, the quality of the uh, the picture. Uh, sorry. Anyway, this is called the cat map because uh, it's uh, someone says this is uh, the C properties automorphism automorphism on torus because in mathematical language basically the transformation is an automorphism of the torus, but someone says that cat comes from the fact that Arnold. Who, who was the, uh, the mathematician who introduced uh, this map, uh, used as a, a pictorial representation the, 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 the face of a cat. And so we see how the transformation uh, works. And this is the result of the, uh, of the modulus, for example. No? You have a stretching. Uh, the formation and stretching of your cat, but the cat, after the, the first step, becomes uh, like this, poor cat. Okay. So the cat map has the properties of randomizing, randomizing any regular spot of point. Point which start very close to each other, quickly separate. Hmm? This is important, two important concepts. First, you, have, you see that the, the, okay, this map randomizes any, any picture. And so if you, if you give a picture to the, to the map, it scramble, okay? But the second thing is important, that point which start very close to each other, for example, here on the ellipses, they, after just a uh, first iteration, they become very far, one here, and one here, for example. Okay. And this is the, uh, the origin of chaos. Another interesting map. Ah, this is, of course, a symplectic map because the determinant is one, of course. No, I miss this to this day. This is a symplectic map. Okay. You can prove that this is another symplectic map that you can encounter if you read a book of chaos. So important is important to discuss. It is called the. No, I can skip this one. I can skip this. Is the 
uh, Chirikov map or standard map. Standard map. I can finish with the standard map. Okay, hopefully. <coughs> the standard map. Standard map. Okay, or Chirikov map, Chirikov, from the Russian mathematician who first uh, introduced this one, Chirikov. I hopefully, okay, Chirikov, Chirikov map. Hmm? And this was introduced for explaining some very strange effect in uh, uh, probably accelerating acceleration um, um, particle physics, some strange behavior of the of the of the accelerators. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is the of course the map. Mm -hmm. It's defined like this. Okay. Basically, that can be put in action angle uh, representation where the, the, uh, the momentum is, uh, is the uh, action and uh, P and Q is the angle. In fact, maybe I, the, the next, uh, in the next uh, slide, I will uh, use this notation. Okay, and the map can be defined, for example, using this uh, very strange Hamiltonian. That is Hamiltonian of a rotator which is uh, subject to an infinite action of res resonances. Hmm? Okay, this is a Hamiltonian of, uh, this is the, the momentum, okay, the action, and this is the potential. Hmm? The potential is a strange potential because it depends on time, but it also has uh, some kind of uh, forcing. In fact, we say that this is a kicked rotator. Every, every period, T, your system, your rotator, hmm, becomes, uh, be, be as, as, uh, has a kick. Tuck. Tuck. No? It's kicked in this sense. So there are lots of resonances, hmm, an infinite number of resonances. Okay. This, uh, this Hamiltonian can be put in a very, uh, uh, in a different way that is uh, more easy to, 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 to deal with. Mm? And uh, is, this can be done by this simple uh, uh, transformation, for example. If you have uh, the cosine, mm? If you have this, the sum of cosine theta no, t plus n over t, over, this is the period of your of your forcing, of your kick. Hmm? Then, if you use the Euler representation. One over two. It's correct. Hmm? Now consider that I can change the sum here and to n to minus n, and so I have, I exchange okay. Mm -hmm. 
okay? Then I can factorize this, this, and so, and I can use uh, this exponential to recover the cosine. I, I can write cosine theta The sign is minus, but not important because I if uh, okay, let me let me use the sinus. Okay, and this is this formula basically, no. I rewrite this formula. I'm using this formula and using the fact that this uh, is an expansion of uh, what is called the Dirac uh, comb. Have you ever seen the Dirac comb? No? The Dirac comb is nothing but this, the sum. Dirac comb is nothing but uh, like uh, I'll call Dirac delta of period t is nothing but the sum minus infinity to infinity n of delta t plus or minus n t. Okay. This is a periodic function, of course. Can you say why? Can you say why this is a, this is a periodic function? Because it's infinite, no? If I make a translation. Uh... Yes. I guess so. I can redefine this one, and I can read. OK. And this is delta because I have shifted the, the sum, but since the sum goes from minus infinity to infinity, I can reabsorb this, this, uh, this one into the, into the sum, okay? This is a period. But any period, uh, any periodic function in an interval, it's, uh, it's uh, amenable to a representation, Fourier representation, no? If I make a Fourier representation of this, uh, because it's periodic, I can have, and this, I leave you this an exercise. I can have this. Uh, so this is, this, this is the representation of this object, the Fourier, Fourier spectrum, Fourier, sorry, Fourier representation of the, uh, the Dirac comb, OK? Then I arrived to this uh, very simple uh, Hamiltonian that I write. Now, now you see I'm using the actual angle uh, representation. I'm passed to this. OK. And then I write the equation of motion, OK? I write the equation of motion of this Hamiltonian. And the equation of motion are quite simple because the equation of motion is uh, uh, I dot is equal to minus dh with respect to theta and <coughs> theta dot is equal to the derivative of h with respect to 2i. 
i dot is equal to k sinus that is minus sine maybe cosine is a sine of minus sine no maybe we have cos we have cos sorry i don't remember we use cos or We use cos. Huh? I don't remember the original. Sorry. Yes, we use cos. So there is a minus sign, minus sign. Uh, And this is equal to i. OK? <coughs> now I have to integrate them. But I have a problem. I have a delta. I have delta. OK. Generally, when you want to solve a problem, a differential equation with uh, some uh, strange distribution, the delta, what you have to do is ignore for the moment the delta. Separate. You know that the delta is here. You separate your region in region 1, region 2. Here, the delta is not acting, neither here, no? And so you can solve the, the equation in a very simple way, OK? But uh, since uh, you have a delta, you have a discontinuity in the derivatives, uh, for example. And you have to introduce the matching condition. So at this point, you have one solution. Another solution that does not take care, does not take into account the delta. But if you have a delta, there is a jump, for example, or in the derivatives, for example. And you have to introduce this matching, hmm? the boundary conditions of these two solutions. OK? It's clear? OK. In this case, uh, you see that uh, uh, you see that, for example, the solution that you have is if you don't consider the if you don't consider the uh, the delta the delta is uh, something like this. Your action are constant, of course. And you say that is the action on the interval n, n minus 1, sorry. And this is the action, for example, in the interval n. <coughs> but, of course, since uh, you have the, the delta, no? The, the, this, this term is acting only when you have the delta. So here, outside is 0, of course. No? So even the equation of motion of theta is very simple. No? It's a straight line. And you have, for example, I call theta plus, no, theta minus, of t and theta and theta plus in this part, okay? With a different slope. The slope is defined by this one, okay? And uh, theta plus of t, okay? And this is the solution of the two, the two behavior. The two, this straight line satisfies this condition, uh, where is plus, you, plus is this one, and uh, minus plus is, the, is this one. And here I define the, what is plus and minus here. Then I consider that the angle is continuing because the angle is not affected by the delta, by the, the, the peak. No? 
the sharp peak, but the jump is into the into the into the um, action behavior, the action behavior. Okay, if you match at this point this equation, you see that you can write your evolution at each forcing. Hmm? At each forcing, you do it. it's, it's basically a stroboscopic uh, stroboscopic view. Eh? It's nothing much more. You see that you can write your evolution of the map at each interval, no? at each spike, on each spike, in this way. And this defines the map, the Chirikov map. Hmm? And this is, this is derived from the equation of the Kicked rotator. OK? Questions? Domanda? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, there is an alternative derivation if you prefer. It's very, this is more, much simpler. Uh, the question is, you have all, again the equation. Since you have the delta, as I told you, I have to integrate uh, this object into uh, a, a period. But since I have the... OK, this is a shaded, uh, I don't know if you, if you are able to see that. This is a shaded uh, area. OK, I integrate uh, your equation of motion over a period. But I shift, the, due to the fact that I have a period, I, a delta, I shift the, this period by an epsilon uh, value, very small epsilon values, that uh, I'm going, that will, will go to 0. OK, if I integrate this into this period, I arrived to this simple uh, uh, equation. Consider that the action is constant, so in this way you have only to compute the uh, area of the rectangles, okay, of these rectangles. This is the rectangles here, for example. Mm? This, is, this is the interval of time and this is the, uh, the height of the rectangle. In this way you have also to sum, since you are integrating on, the, on a, a period, you have also to sum this part, and again this is the epsilon, is the, the, the base, and the in is the, uh, the height. So this is the integration of your, of your equation of motion over a period. You put epsilon to zero and you obtain the same equation. It's an alternative derivation, okay? Since I give you the slides, uh, you can find this, uh, this, uh, this uh, computation uh, already done. Uh, OK, so this is the standard map. You can, of course, uh, study, and I leave you, uh, this is an exercise, the fixed point of the, of the map. And uh, also the Jacobian of the map, of course, is, uh, the Jacobian of the map is, how much is this Jacobian of the, is one, exactly, because the area of reserving, is, and not only totally area of reserving, it's symplectic. This is something more, OK? And uh, you can compute the fixed point, for example, and you, start, you can study the stability, but it's uh, OK, Some, uh, something that we will see. And uh, for k equal to 0, the map is integrable. No? For k equal to 0, the map you put here, he, k equal to 0, the map is very simple. No? Then the map is integral because you have, for example, that i n remain uh, remain constant hmm? remain the value at the beginning remains at the value at the beginning while theta n is of course of course um, theta 0 plus n i 0 okay hmm? And uh, again, if uh, I0 is a rational, the, the motion of the orbit is periodic. If uh, I0 is uh, irrational, it feels uh, 
is, is, uh, is not, is, uh, the motion is, is quasi-periodic, okay? In, what I'm saying is that suppose you start, this is your 0, 1 or 0, 2 pi square where I fold my, my map, because okay, I forgot here to write that this is modulus 2 pi. So I fold the trajectories into, the, into this, this square, okay? Oh, if I take, for example, this is i0, this is i, and this is theta. If I take, for example, i0 that is uh, uh, rational, you see that uh, the evolution of the integral of a map is a set of point and it repeats instead if i0 is an irrational what you see is a, a continuous line which cross the uh, the square okay Horizontal, continu horizontal, continuous line, okay? And this is the value of theta, of theta. Theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, theta 4, theta 5, no? And they repeat. Okay, theta 1, theta, okay. You have a repetition, periodic, periodic, periodic motion. But if you increase, if you increase the <coughs> values k, the values k that is your displacement for integrability, you see that the behavior slightly changes. Here, first of all, for small k, you see that the scenario is very similar to a pendulum. In fact, as I told you, the kicker rotator is nothing but a pendulum where someone gives a kick every time, every, every second, for example. No, you are kicking tan, tan every second. And in fact, it represents basically the scenario of the pendulum. The deformation of the, of the straight line is due to the fact that you have the cosine, so the cosine deform a little bit, but the behavior is uh, basically recall a pendulum. If you increase again the nonlinear parameter k, hmm, you see that something new happens. So that there are some uh, thin layer of, uh, of uh, chaos, for example. Hmm, and uh, that are separated by those lines that survive and not destroyed by the perturbation. Because some lines are only deformed by the perturbation. But, for example, periodic, periodic, uh, periodic behavior doesn't exist anymore, of course. But, for, I don't know, maybe survive some, and they are the island, for example, the island, hmm? could be the islands, for example. But anyway, between these two deformed uh, uh, lines, you can have the development of chaos. Hmm? Until you arrive at the values Kc, Kc, where larger portion of chaotic behavior are uh, appearing, are appearing, and uh, but there is, uh, you see, what is called a survival, survival line, survival oh, integral. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Next time, okay, I, next time I will uh, explain better because you don't have, this is important because uh, maybe Angelo Vulpiani tells you something about camp theory, and the standard map is the Best, it's like, like an oscillator or the, the, has the same uh, importance of uh, harmonic oscillator in physics, in quantum physics. So, okay, thank you, sorry to be late.